Hello everybody and welcome back to Simon's Order Academy. Today we're going to be talking about what I think are the top five Lumineth units that you can use in Settlers game. So before kind of talking about which units I choose, I think I need to clarify exactly how I value a unit um, to take as a one in four unit. Um, this ability is available to a number of cities, so you can take 1 in 4 KO in Tempesai, you can take 1 in 4 Sylvaneth in Living City, you can take 1 in 4 um, Daughters of Cain and Harkuron, although that's a little bit different to the um, the rest of them. And then of course you can take, always pretty much take 1 in 4 Stormcasts uh, in all of your cities except for uh, Harkuron. So the way that I weigh up whether or not a unit's worth it. So the War Scroll itself needs to be inherently strong and have self-contained rules. Um, so in this video, a good example, this is the Sun Metal Weapons on the Venari Wardens and Sentinels. Basically, you don't need anything else for that to go off except for the rules on the War Scroll and they are fairly self-sufficient. Um, interactions between units must either buff friendly models or buff based on keywords. So for example, Teclis's Protection of Hish affects all friendly units in range. Uh, which just means basically any uh, unit in your army. Uh, a similar rule to this is on the Knight of Xeros that uh, friendly units can reroll hit rolls of one uh, against units that are within 10 inches of him. So similar interaction there. Uh, and then you've got ones that buff based on keywords alone. So the Luminarx or of Protection um, or the, the Hurricanum's ability basically affects um, Cities of Sigma units in an aura. Um, you... I look for buffs unavailable in their own battle tome. Um, so, for example, the Hurricanum gives a plus one hit in a 10 inch aura. Uh, the Lumineth battle tomes don't really have that. The KO battle tomes don't have that. Um, there's pretty much no battle tome that has a buff piece as strong as the Hurricanum with a plus one to hit. Uh, and so, the Hurricanum itself brings a lot to any uh, one in four unit that you choose to have in a list. Um, and then conversely, Sentinels um, in Cities of Sigma and Settlers Gain assist with ranged mortals which are otherwise in short supply in the Cities of Sigma. And basically range damage at over 16 inches is something they also assist with, uh, which we don't typically have access to in Cities of Sigma outside of our artillery units. Uh, one of the main ones is cost efficiency. So sometimes a comparable unit in another battle tome is just better. Um, so, for example, um, when you can take units in Daughters of Cain that are arguably underpriced, uh, they may be better than comparable options in Cities of Sigma. So, for example, you know, in Harkiron, the only real melee units you can take are Executioners or Blackguard, and nine times out of ten, like your Sisters of the Slaughter or Witch Elves are just going to be a, a, a better option, basically, to take. Um, and then finally, if you take two units from the same battle tome, make sure that they benefit each other. So this is something that you're basically working on the buffs in the other battle tome, but then bringing in the benefits from being in your battle tome. So um, Wardens make Sentinels battle line, for example. Um, so they benefit each other. It gives you two battle line from taking the two one in four choices. So you don't need to pad out your battle line with other units. Um, Cathlars, for example, prevent battle shock on Wardens or Sentinels uh, on a 2+, plus, and so that saves you from spending command points. Um, there's, just, there's a lot of, op, um, there's a lot of um, examples of this, but those are the two most obvious ones that I could come up for with the Lumineth. So, Big Daddy Tackless. Um, he's an obvious uh, choice to take because Cities of Sigma typically don't have a big centerpiece model. I've mentioned this before when talking about Marathi. Um, Teclis is cool. A lot of people don't like his model, but you know, if you don't like his model, don't buy it, basically. Rules-wise, it's a very strong model. Um, the main benefits that you're getting from taking him in Settler's Gain is he obviously gains the Cities of Sigma keyword. Uh, things that that affects basically is that the Hurricanum gives him plus one hit. Uh, he's hitting on all threes in melee, so making that twos makes him quite good. Um, in in makes him significantly better in melee um, compared to what he is before. And his shots are two and two, so if you can get that up on, you know, if you're targeting a model that's got lookout, so it'd go back to two and two as opposed to a three and two, which is always better. Um, Cities of Sigma, as part of their battle traits, they have empowered uh, endless spells, and the one that you always take in Lumineth with Teclis is the Umbral Spell Portal, which just gives you 
a bit more reach for the the patented Technado. Um, when you take it in cities, you don't have to put it hollow within 18 inches of the first one. It can go anywhere on the board. And so basically, Teclos can hit anywhere on the board with his you know big Technado casting on a 10 automatically. Uh, it's amazing. I highly suggest that if you weren't considering running this already, that you should be running it now. Um, and then there are other empowered spells with Teclos because he auto casts everything on a 10. Um, and so, you know, uh, a lot of cities lists are dependent on um, the, the bridge combination or launch on uh, with Iron Drakes, for example. Um, and that the option to basically auto cast those spells, it, it cannot be understated how strong that is, basically. Um, four casts at a 10, two casts at a 12, or one completely un unbindable, plus one unbind without rolling any dice is amazing. It just gives you, uh, it's the same as, you know, like um, Destiny dice in, in Zinch. You take dice out of a dice game, you get rid of that RNG, um, and, you know, you allow your opponent to make a mistake in which spell they're going to dispel. Uh, very good, really good. Um, the protection of tech loss affects all friendly units, so it's just friendly units, not Lumineth units, and so um, any unit within 18 inches, uh, wholly within 18 inches, will get a 5 plus after save from protection of tech loss. Uh, the Seeing Stone of Selenar, which is the um, magic resistance spell on a 4 plus and bouncing mortals, uh, also affects all friendly units, wholly within 18 inches, so amazing. Um, <sighs> He's, he's just he's just a really strong model. He's a really good pick, and I highly suggest that if you were going to if you want an excuse to take Teclas in your Cities of Sigmar army, literally just buy just buy Teclas and just use all the rest Cities models, and you'll still get really good output out of him. Uh, the cons, he doesn't get access to the spell law, um, which you know it, it's not huge because the spells are shit. But the big thing is, is that when he's not in Lumineth, he doesn't know all the spells from the Lumineth uh, spell laws, and so you're really limited to protection of Hish, um, the Storm of Searing White Light, uh, Arcane Bolt, and then Mystical Shield. Uh, sorry, Mystic Shield, um, combined with any endless spells that you take. Like typically, you're going to be going um, Umbral Spell Portal, Protection of Hish, and um, uh, Searing Storm, and then one extra. So, you know, maybe a little sneaky Arcane Bolt at a 10 that's D3 Mortals automatically, uh, or a Mystic Shield on a unit that might want it. So, like, you've got four spells you want to cast, basically. Um, but but it is it is a drawback that you don't get access to those spells. Uh, now, he's a big centerpiece model. Typically in cities, you're not going to be going first because you don't have access to good battalions. Um, sorry, you're not going to get choice of going first because you don't have access to low drops. And he's a big centerpiece model, so if they have the output uh, and they are able to try and put some wounds onto him, uh, they can do so, basically. Um, next one is he's taking up, you know, literally like a third of your army, uh, which can be, if he, if he doesn't return, you know, a 606 points worth of value, um, it's, it's dangerous taking him in a list. But I think it, sometimes he can make that up in one turn with a good um, searing storm of white light. Uh, and then finally, his plus one to cast from Selenar only affects Lumineth units. Um, so it's not bad if you take him and, say, a Gathala or a, um, a Calagrave or a Lawseeker, which is, I think, my favorite, you know, one-two combination, Teclas and a Lawmaster. Uh, they will get plus one to cast, but it doesn't affect any of your friendly units. And he doesn't get the plus one to cast from Settler's Gain because he's obviously not Collegiate Arcane. So speaking of the scenario, Lawseeker, we'll cover him next. So, like, he's a cool model. He's got some unique rules. Um, I think he's I think he's pretty much an auto choice in Lumineth, and I think he comes close to being an auto choice in Settler's Gain. So his pros are that Lone Ranger um, allows you to null drop, the value of which cannot be understated, especially if you've got say him and like two units of um, Shadow Blades, three null drops. Your opponent has to drop three or four units before you even drop one. That's really strong. Um, but Lone Ranger also allows him to teleport onto an objective first turn and auto hold it um, unless the opponent can remove him. When you deploy this guy in cover on an objective, he's got a two plus armor save and a lot of armies will struggle to remove him, basically. 
Um, I think he combos well with Teclas, as I mentioned um, on the previous slide, so protection of Hish uh, will help him, and he also gets the bonus cast with the Aura of Selenar, and it gives him some uh, spell protection. And, you know, often you can put him on an objective and within, wholly within 18 of Teclas uh, on certain scenarios like Total Commitment, or is it Total Conquest? One of the two. One of those quarter, quarter board ones. Um, you can do sneaky tricks with deploying him um, in the backfields and then casting empowered or, or just endless spells like the um, uh, either what is it the pendulum either void pendulum the pendulum anyway uh, that or purple sun or you know there's there's a number of spells you can cast um, in the backfield when you are far enough away from enemy models um most of the spells have at least like 15 to 18 inch range um you know even just sneaky geminids 20 26 inch range on geminids um you deploy him nine away like it's going to hit a lot of things uh and then basically gives you options so in some scenarios like scorched earth um, a lot of the time people don't have enough units to cover all four of their objectives and so if they cover three of them and you put him you know, on one uh, corner objective, that's going to be um, that's going to be pretty massive. Uh, the cons for him, so he's just a six win model. Um, he's particularly, you know, fragile uh, and susceptible to mortal wounds, like a unit of um, sentinels, for example. If you're playing against Lumineth, I'll just take him off in one turn. Uh, again, he's unable to take any law spells, and he doesn't get the plus one to cast because he doesn't have the keywords. Um, but not being able to take a law spell is particularly relevant as he doesn't have a war scroll spell of his own. So basically, he's going to be either be casting endless spells uh, or mystic shield on himself. Uh, he's also very expensive. Uh, so 160 points for him, whereas you could just get um, you know another battle mage basically for 110 that gets the that can have an artifact that can get the plus one to cast, um, you know, and has a number of other benefits of taking in Cities of Sigma, um, but I still think that he's a, a good option. So probably my favorite unit, um, probably on par with Teclas, are the Venari Wardens. Um, so basically a melee unit, they are battle line. Um, when you, you know, take them in any any list that can take them not as allies. So counts in Settlers gain as your battle line. The next benefit is that they also make Sentinels battle line. So this is probably my, this is my favorite combo in Settlers gain. So you take a unit of Wardens, a unit of Sentinels, that's your one in four, and you take eight drops, done. Uh, really good combination. Um, the, the melee output is quite significant. Um, you know, the sixes, the mortals on sixes to hit, um, come from that we get in cities are from great swords or um, executors uh, great swords are probably the most comparable unit because they've got similar profiles except great swords um, do a mortal wound in addition these guys just do a uh, mortal wound uh, and the attack sequence ends however these guys can get themselves up to a, a mortals on a five uh, and also they have a three inch reach whereas great swords only have a one inch reach uh, and they're essentially the same cost as great swords uh, so I think you would take these guys basically every time over great swords. Um, when they are charged, um, they're the best defensive output basically in cities of Sigma. Um, so it's threes and threes, rend one, one damage, five still immortal wounds. Uh, if you've got a hurricane nearby, they're twos and threes. Um, they're just they're just real good. They are re really really good, and people will, you know, probably not want to charge them because they're so good. Um, and then, of course, the pros, they get an extra cast and a spell. That cast is typically only ever going to be used on Sun Metal Weapons. Um, but if you're not going to be charged a turn, if you've taken something like um, the Hishian Twin Stones in the list, they can cast that first turn, and then subsequent turns they're getting plus two to cast, basically, which is good. Uh, the drawbacks of them, they're unable to take a law spell. Again, um, same problem as all the other wizards. I don't know why they've done this in Settlers Gain. It kind of annoys me because literally every other city, it just says a wizard in the city can take this. And I presume that they did this so that your, um, basically your, your Venari units can't take law spells, but the law spells are shit. So I don't know why it matters. Um, they lose Shining Company, which is a big issue. Um, like I said, oh, sorry, it's not that big an issue, but in relative terms, if you take them in Lumineth, they cost the same, but they're minus one to hit in melee. Like that's pretty big. Um, I like to run these guys in a big block of 20 or 30, uh, and that many 32 millimeter models takes up a lot of board. 
Uh, and then if anybody has played with wardens, they'll understand that if you have to move these models, if you have to rank them up, if you have to take wounds off from um, uh, from combat or shoot, just take just doing anything with these models because of those pole arms is just a pain in the ass. Um, and so that's that's kind of like a real world limitation of, of why sometimes, you know, you might not take a model just because it's such a pain in the ass to, to actually rank up and to remove models during a game. So the Venari Sentinels are a unit that has probably taken some of the heaviest flack of any in the game, um, basically due to their being able to ignore line of sight and shooting 36 inches away. Um, but now that I can take them, I think they're great. Uh, so they're 140 points, so they're quite expensive for 10 guys. However, what you get is 1,000% worth it. Um, so your ranged mortal output, you know, on a six normally. So if you've got nine guys firing, you're going to get at least one, probably two. And then if you go up to mortals on a five plus, um, then you're going to get three mortal wounds per unit of 10 shooting, which is quite good. Um, when so the list that i've been running runs 20 of these guys so you're typically getting six mortal wounds um anywhere on the board essentially because of how how good their range is uh you can basically take off a character return and so it's not hard to make the back the 280 points but the best thing about playing them in settlers game is that it um when you take a hurricane and luminarch which i am in my list um you get you know significant ranged mortals and a lot of armies struggle against that um and and that you know makes people make mistakes basically and put things out of range which which means that they can't buff other units it's just it, it opens up your opponent to making mistakes when you have a unit of sentinels uh they have impressive range so 30 inches plus a six inch walk is a 36 inch threat range uh the majority of cities of sigma units are 16 inches um i mean sisters of the watcher 18 crossbows are 24 but crossbows can't walk and shoot twice and neither can sisters neither can iron drakes the greatest range thing is basically hang on as walking five and then shooting 16 so 21 compared to 36 so the difference between those two is huge um and so typically when you're playing cities and you're playing that ranged output you need to take the bridge or louch on to in increase your range and that requires you to cast spells uh these guys basically don't need you to cast spells that they, they like it if you do but they don't need you to to actually get output from turn zero um the line of sight uh ignoring rule ignores the base rule of the game which is requiring a line of sight so you, your opponent can't hide amazing um gives you an extra cast and a spell again will pretty much always be used um on sun metal weapons um but, you know, an extra to spell as well. So any of the C running that you get extra to spells is good. Um, that can be battle line. Again, as I said, with the with the wardens. So, you know, wardens and these guys are two of your three required battle line. It's amazing. Uh, and then finally, when you have a hurricane, they're even better. So they're hitting on twos, wounding on fours with one rend at 18 inches. Uh, it's, you know, it's it's not it's not great, but it's also pretty good. Hurricane just makes them significantly better. Uh, the cons, so similar to the Wardens, they don't get a Lore spell, they miss out on Shining Company, and these guys, uh, any unit of 20 with a save of 5+, plus, are particularly vulnerable to Battleshock without a Cathalar present, uh, even though you should be getting enough command points in Settler's Gain, uh, it, it still leaves, you know, that they can still run quite easily because they're only Bravery 6 at base and they don't get a bonus from a Banner Bear or anything like that, like other units in the army. So the fifth option... Uh, that I think is good for Cities of Figma is Avalon or the Stoneheart King. Um, so the benefits from taking him, he's got his one inch, um, <clears throat> sorry, he's got his 12 inch minus one to hit bubble. Uh, and I quite like how this stacks with fast protection for minus two to hit, especially when uh, you're encouraged to take the battalion in Settler's Gain. Uh, you should be getting a huge battle mage anyway. Um, and minus two to hit is, is quite significant when you're fighting stuff in melee fours become sixes even threes become fives like it reduces output by a significant amount um he partners well with the hurricanum so the hurricanum makes all his attacks plus one to hit they're usually on threes um <clears throat> so everyone would know that when you use a an either quartz you put him up to you know twos to hit it's significantly better than um than threes to hit and in this uh, army you can get that every single turn uh, so it's a great option um, he works well in tandem with the Stone Mage. I think, as I mentioned before, when you, t you should always take two units and they should um, make each other better. I think that you take the Stone Mage with him, and the Stone Mage obviously um, 
just makes him fight at top profile until he's dead, basically. And he's 14 wounds with a 3-plus save. Like, he's quite resilient. Given that 5-up after save uh, from the Luminarch and um, still very impressive um, resilience. Um, solid melee output. So he's got, when he's charged, he's 7 attacks. Um, hitting on 2s, wounding on 3s. Um, rend 1, I think it's rend 1. And 5 damage. Um, 5 damage is the kicker there. Um, on seven attacks, you know, if you hit and win with everything, which you probably won't, but, you know, if you do, um, then you're getting off 35 damage from a single model, which is quite impressive. Um, and then, finally, you know, he can act as a hammer or an anvil. So, minus two to hit in melee means that he, he actually works as a pretty solid anvil. Uh, you can also um, have him act as a hammer, which he can just do damage, basically. Um and he's a, he's a centerpiece model of sorts. So he's a character model. He's very thematic. Um, and, you know, again, we don't have that many things. We've got the Luminarch and the Hurricanum. So having those two with Avalonor in the same list, that would make a pretty impressive army on the table. Uh, the drawbacks from him. He's a big model who will draw fire. Um, he's fairly resilient. However, he will go down to sustained um, firepower. You can't ignore Rend with him in cities. Um, and he can't get up to a 2 plus or a 1 plus with Aether Quartz. Um, so he'll go down easier. Um, he's relatively slow, movement of 6 inches. You can't put Speed of Fish on him in cities, so he's always going to be moving 6 inches. Uh, you're probably going to be wanting to run him turn 1, but his range attack is actually quite good, especially with the Hurricane making it 2s to hit. Um, so you've, you've kind of got that decision on whether you run him or whether you don't. Uh, and then finally, he's the same cost as 30 Wardens. They have 30 wounds. Uh, he's got 14. They have a 4-up save. He has a 3-up save. Uh, they have 60 attacks. He doing 1 damage, and he has 6 attacks doing 5 damage. So basically half everything um, to get him. But I think that he brings enough uh, benefits that he is worth considering. It is worth mentioning that he is also um, a behemoth. Uh, which in certain scenarios in GHB 2020 can be beneficial. So there are just a few things that I wanted to mention outside of the top five. Um, so Hishi and Twinstones don't really deserve an entry of their own, but they're just amazing for 30 points. Um, plus did a cast for Wizards um, within 12. I think when you've got Wardens and Sentinels, you should look at taking um, the Twinstones. Essentially, first turn you cast uh, Twin Stones with the uh, with the Wardens and the Sentinels cast their um, their Blades of Sun Metal Blades, and then the next turn, um, sorry, they cast Power of Fish, uh, and then second turn both of them are at plus two to cast, um, which is good. Uh, the only downside is is that it can only be cast by Lumineth Wizards, but if you've got two units and fifty models, um, you're probably fine in that respect. Uh, second of all is El Elania and Elithor. Uh, so they can ally into any city, not just Settlers gain. Uh, the extra CP is always useful because uh, I think that cities want more than the one that you get every turn. Translocation is interesting. So it provides some mobility that Cities of Sigmar can otherwise struggle with. Um, being able to place anywhere in the board uh, 12 inches away from enemy models is quite good. Um, You've just got to, the, the thing is, is that you've got to expose them to danger. Uh, and they're, they're not they're not completely weak, like they're, you know, eight wound model with a three plus armor save and potentially a five up after save as well. Um, but they're, <clears throat> you know, concentrated fire, they can go down. Uh, they should be teleporting and healing all over the place. But, you know, ideally you want them to be on, you know, two wounds remaining at the end of the combat phase. So they definitely teleport, they definitely... Um, get the heal off, um, but sometimes uh, that just won't happen and they will take those last two wounds and that'll be it and it'll be completely wasted. Um, yeah, I just... They're, they're good. They're good. Um, but for 260 points, there are a lot better options and I think, again, I would rather, you know, 20 Wardens um, or essentially 20 Sentinels for the same price. Yeah. That's that's probably always the better choice, uh, but they're they're a fun choice. Um, and when you're not doing settlers gain, uh, they can go into any city, and they still provide two casts at a plus one and two unbinds at a plus one, um, which is never you know something to sniff at. 
Uh, and then finally is the Star Shard Ballista. Um, so it's better than the Hellstorm Rocket Battery, the, the Hellblaster Volley Gun, the Cellar Star Ballista, all of our existing artillery options. It's better than all of those, bar maybe Gun Haulers, probably are better for their points cost. Um, the ones per game minus one to hit is a great situational debuff because of the the, the range on the Star Shard Ballista. You can hit anything basically on the board if these things are central. Um, and with Huracanum, they've got plus one hit, so they're hitting on twos. So you're basically guaranteed to get off that minus one to hit um, wherever you want it, and that gives you, you know, it gives you options. Uh, you can give away the the double sometimes if a unit's got minus one to hit on it. Uh, combos well with fast protection again for minus two to hit. So minus one to hit on their unit, and then minus one to hit on your unit uh, means that just the the output of a melee unit is just going to be basically you know zero if you get those two off in combination um and those those are the three that that didn't really make the top eight but that i think you know warrant some consideration in the cities of sigmar army and with eliana and elthor not just settlers gain so that's it for today's video uh i would love to hear some feedback from you guys if you agree with the choices that i've made if you think that there are some options that are better you'll note that i've left out pretty much all of the um the wind models like Severeth and the Kangaroo Riders. I just don't think they gel that well um, with cities, but you know, if, if you disagree or if you would like to present an opposing opinion, please leave a comment below. Uh, and I typically respond to all comments below because I like to engage over Cities of Sigma content because I love Cities of Sigma. Um, if you'd like to reach out, uh, either do so in the comments here. Uh, I usually post on Facebook, so you know, post under that. Or uh, on Twitter, I am at Zweihander Hall you can basically reach out to me at any time and I will talk to you at any time about Cities of Sigma. Um, I recently got a new mic to try and do this. It seems to be giving me some feedback issues. Might have to invest in an even better mic. Uh, the I think because the content has been going out fairly regularly, might set up a Patreon. If you want to hook me a few dollars to buy a new mic, that'd be super. Um, I'll let you guys know when that happens. Um, uh, but otherwise, yeah, reach out and talk to me about Seeds of Sigma because with Age of Sigma 3 coming, the game is probably going to be in one of the strongest, uh, positions that it's been in a long time if the new edition of 40k is anything to go by. So thanks for listening and I will see you guys next time.